Hello, everybody. I'm Chris C, the founding director of the Costec project. I want to spend some time today to give you an update on what's going on in the Costec ecosystem, especially around the design and development uh, activity that we have been undertaking, as well as a commentary on the general state of the market and how we believe that the idea of the decentralization movement and the idea of building a much more healthy technology for the rest of us, uh, how that's going. So. For us, the decentralized internet really is an abstract concept. We really think that we're building the Web 3.0 uh, system, the experience for that. And the question really about it is that how would people experience Web 3.0? For those of us that have actually uh, played with different aspects of blockchain, crypto, and different type of decentralized technology, it's quite important to share that instinct and those understanding and we want people to be able to through card stack experience what does it mean to learn this new way of interacting with technology in each other and so for us card stacks main vision is to really uh, build that uh, stack so that people can through card stack get to that uh, kind of visceral understanding and experience for themselves so the question really is what is web 3.0 and there's many definitions of it uh, one of which is the kind of Ethereum Gavin Wood version when they talk about Web3.js, which is that this is about crypto. Web3 is about the internet of value, verifiable uh, transactions and transferable assets and synchronized around a global ledger. Uh, the problem that I think people are realizing that after a while, it's that that particular type of technology and saying that that's the only definition, it's only narrow, narrowly applicable. Only a small subset of things are really just about value. There's so much that goes on to, in the internet that's not about that. And the decentralized app that's been built on top of that are relatively hard to use. I do believe they'll get easier, but it typically are very specific to just exposing the capability of this new kind of blockchain internet value. So for me, the Web 3.0, really a healthy way to look at it is really a combination of the web we are today, Web 2.0, and some of the principle and ideas of Web 1.0. Remember, in Web 1.0, people have their own homepages, website look completely different. In Web 2.0, because of the network effects and the centralization around a couple of websites, it becomes just a couple of big websites you go to. But what if we can combine that kind of quirky, uh, in innovative and uniqueness of Web 1.0 with the network effects and, and propagation and, and ecosystem of 2.0? Because if we can do that, what we realize is that this Web 3.0, that's the combination of 1.0 plus 2.0, is much more inclusive because 4.2 billion people is on the web today. And they, they want to see what's going to come after this you know, what's after these kind of digital superpowers uh, dominating the, the landscape. And what I love about the web is that it's linkable so that things can come together. My page and your page come together, not just within one giant website, google.com, facebook.com, but across a much more healthy, diverse ecosystem. And what we've learned about the web is that it's also very referenceable. It almost doesn't exist unless you can say, here's a link to something, even like here's a link to a transaction on Etherscan, here's a link to a page, or this is a proof that something has happened, people still rely on that URL, that referenceability. Uh, and that's a great quality to build upon. One of the problems of what Web 1.0, obviously, is very static, right? That the capability and technology around just making web pages doesn't really allow for interaction. It's mostly a publishing platform. The more interactive social stuff is centralized. But what if we can bring those things, those ideals, and really deliver a new experience? And what to do that, we need another actual version of Web 3.0, which is Web Dev 3.0. The tools that we used to develop the web has really tremendously improved. And it used to be, it's about HTML uh, in Web 1.0, and then LAMP stack, PHP, MySQL, WordPress, Drupal, and all these kind of tools. But now we have this new generation of JavaScript and APIs that allows us to do something a lot more functional, focused, and empowering, very similar to what's going on in like native apps, but in a way that is much more empowering to people. So you can create on the web just as easily 
as you can create uh, on a desktop app. Uh, but the problem with that is that it's extremely siloed, that each people, each person building for these things are building a website with a certain features, and there's a lot of duplicate effort for get password uh, and all this kind of stuff. It's all like everybody have to do it every single time. Uh, so while everybody's very productive in building amazing new apps, everybody's repeating the same task over and over again. And is it possible for us to say, hey, let's share the modules between ourselves? And that hasn't really happened yet. Uh, there's open source sharing of libraries and toolkits and frameworks, but not really about sharing features among different developers who's building the app. And that what that's I believe is the substrate of what can really unlock the value of the web 3.0 by providing those features and, and community around the developer building for and designing for web dev 3.0. And finally, one thing that we want to talk about is that you know in some circle, web 3.0 really means uh, the spatial web, uh, web 3D, right? Um, you know. AR, or augmented reality, virtual reality, these are all things that people talk about. Taking what we learn from games and, and having tangible objects, handing things and upgrading and, 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 and interacting in a massively multiplayer way. And these are all things that I think are extremely interesting, right? Because that's a type of in infrastructure that people uh, have, have already really, you know, Got, fell in love with. There's something feels much more physical and real when you're playing a game than browsing a website and being passive in your interaction. Uh, but the problem of Web 3D, obviously, is that it's just a game. Uh, this is not real. Every game recreate its own virtual open world, uh, but it's not, you know, the next version comes out, you start from scratch. And finally, and when we talk about uh, Web, uh, it, it, you know, is concerned, you know, 3D on the web is really a little bit strange. It's sometimes the third dimension really gets in the way. So our conception is really about two and a half D, bringing together different aspects of, of the web in a way that allows us to be uh, completely connected between kind of hyperlinking between the objects. So what does this mean? That means that there are four things that we are really trying to bring together, four definitions of Web 3.0. You know, Web 3 from crypto, uh, the, the new idea of you know, connecting the, to the people who are on the web, meeting people where they are, this new capability of development tools that's bring together, and the potential of tapping into the, some of the ideas from gaming. So this idea of bringing these qualities, verifiability, transferability, synchronizability, linkability, inclusiveness, referenceable, functional focus, empowering application with spatial tangible interactive. These are the elements I believe will really uh, f uh, become the, the root of what would really en encompass and embrace by people who would say, oh, this feels materially different than what, you know, the Facebook that I check every day. So the question then becomes, what is this unit of interaction within Web 3.0. And for us, this Web 3.0 is really a connection between different objects, like in the game, that is each a web page, and then some of them represent assets or payment that's tangible. And when you want to edit it, we want to manipulate it, you can treat each one of these objects as its own mini focus app and be able to tap into it and make it focus. And that's essentially the Cossack vision. We want to be the stack for Web 3.0 to support the creation of these objects, which we happen to call cards, and in letting them link together and letting people manipulate them the same way they would manipulate and create the world in a game or create a website with these tools, but in a way that feels a lot more uh, connected to the way the world is today. So Web 3.0 can best be think of as a bunch of uh, uh, cards um, representing content data, sometimes men membership and agreements, and they can come together and orchestrate in workflows and get automated and lead to payments and selling of products and obviously messaging and, and the other type of duplicative uh, of what currently happens in Web 2.0. And these cards are essentially mini web applications. So each application itself contains what looks like as, you know, uh, 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 the work that you would do to create an app. It has templates uh, it, uh, for layout and styling, so it looks like a web thing using the latest web platform to render it you know, beautifully with animation. And it has also JavaScript or app logic, so it has fields and constraints and permissions. And then underneath it, it maps to a data model. 
right? This is a database that allows you to say, hey, when I create this agreement, it will get saved somewhere. When I send it to you, you'll be able to retrieve that and look at it, edit it, and send it back to me. So there is a kind of underlying uh, truth that's being shared. Now, whether that uh, JSON API or this kind of object is persisted on blockchain or cloud service on your computer, doesn't really matter. We really think that the apps don't really care where it goes to the data as long as this app feels like, hey, this card that represents this piece of content or this article exists. Um, and so one of the things we work really hard on is that cards that say, say independent of each other, it's cool, but then you get different apps and silos and stuff like that. It would be great if these apps can embed each other, then can take each other's capability and bring it together. So relationship delegation and metadata access, allowing an article to include a place, uh, includes an event, it includes a map, includes another uh, thing that is maybe a value statement or an agreement that includes a picture or, or a signature. This idea of embedding is really key, and this is something we worked a lot Lot on in card stack is that cards are great, but if they can be composed together and you build greater and greater application that becomes less and less mini, even though they can still move around in this kind of affordances that like giving someone a card, receiving something, but that thing could just be like, you know, a docket, like an agreement, a, 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 a deal that includes the other things that makes, makes it up. So when, when we talk about what this ecosystem of cards look like, we're really talking about multiple cards sourced from different data source. So let's say we have five cards here. A user card can come from a OAuth identity source. Uh, and, and this is my identity from this system, an enterprise system or a consumer system. I have a document that could be version control and that could be open sourced on places like GitHub or be stored in a content management system. I have a news feed that takes that together and show me all the documents that people have uploaded. I have a video which may have some binary that requires it to go to a file storage. Now this could come from a cloud-based file storage like S3, which is run by Amazon, or it could come from something in the future. And then if your wallet card, which is another uh, kind of mini application, and that can tap into, let's say, the Ethereum protocol. These things exist uh, as a way to completely give you the facade that these things are mine and I can move them around. If you want to say, you know, you know, all of these things are actually connecting to this data source, you're in luck because we've actually built all of these things already. And the key is to say, when you have the ability to have these cards uh, built uh, back in the, into the decentralized world, the question is, can we turn it into a decentralized world? So here's what happens. When you want to decentralize these cards, all you do is just a swap of the data source. So we built something called Costack Hub that allows you to abstract the way what these cards require in terms of data to populate it so it looks like a real thing. And instead of going to a you know enterprise system, it can go use decentralized identity. Instead of using GitHub, which is a centralized service hosted and owned now by Microsoft, you can use Git, which is a very decentralized protocol and blockchain to version control between people without uploading to a central server. Instead of you know using your own database, you can use GraphQL to go around and look for things to put together to this news feed. Instead of using uh, cloud storage to store the video, you may be able to use IPFS or Swamp. And obviously for wallets, you may want to tap into new type of public ledgers coming in, uh, like EOS and Tesla. So there's a question from the community, do we have a plan to support EOS? And the idea is yes, we have a plugin system, uh, EOS and EOS dApps are just essentially plugging that particular system. But with this particular set of uh, abstraction, once you build these user cards and newsfeed cards, you've done, you know, the, the front end, the user experience is complete. Then it, we can just delegate to engineers who's going to work in the back end and say, hey, let's make this healthy. Let's connect it to decentralization uh, protocol. And then the experience become wider reaching, but without saying, hey, you're going to have to uninstall and reinstall everything. It's just the same cost of experience with now tapping a new type of protocols. So, how does this actually become the type of application that we want? So essentially cards becomes what we call decks. Decks are basically a collection of cards that makes up a particular application. So if you're making a official site, like a website or web portal, uh, then you may have something more typical of a document, a promo, search results and homepage, podcast and team. So these are more content and more interaction and community engagement type of card. If you're building your own personal kind of private space for you to kind of keep track of your possession and your relationship in the world, you may have a card that represents you, your wallets, whether it's you know hardware wallets or even remote 
hosted wallet, your membership, what you belong, a light box of what you're working on right now, this will be your personal deck that will be only viewable by you. And in building collaborative application, you might add things that is more social, message and threads and checklists and requests and approval and figuring out who's the member, who's a participant. And the idea of a deck is to find a way to have a collection of cards so that through these composite composition of cards, you actually see a fully working application that looks no different, you know, in first glance as a really advanced website that people spend a lot of time doing. But what's different about it is that it's compositional. So you don't have to code each thing and get a developer to code each next thing. The card runtime automatically decides, oh, you put this inside that, let me just render it all together. So as a way to dog food this, we, you know, we built a, um, a, you know, a deck, the first deck called Cossack slash deck. Now this is a private GitHub repository we've been working on for about two months now. Uh, and we will open source a version of that very soon. Uh, what we did was we built 27 different type of cards uh, representing what would be the official website for the Cossack community. And in each one of those 27 cards, we have templates and JavaScript, JSON API, they are completely separate application that happens to be kind of combined in this mono repo. Uh, a mono repository is just a place where everything stores. And then when you interact with it, we actually create another repository for data persistence in GitHub where the corresponding data are stored. Um, everything you create is actually checked in through revision control. It works. Uh, and, and it's amazing to see that ability for this rendering system really come to light in a relatively simple content use case. But the rendering pipeline is really what, what we're trying to do. So. When we're looking at uh, these decks that comes together, we're really uh, grouping these decks into two types of delivery. Once you have the decks, card can be at rest, so it's like you know gathering uh, it uh, at at a at a at a at a website and a portal, or it can be in motion. I'm sending you something, submitting something for your approval. So for us, when a user interact with card stack, it always becomes like, are you dealing with it and searching and querying for it in, in kind of the at rest space, or are you trying to take a card, lift it, and conduct a workflow, a card flow? So let's be a little bit more concrete. Um, the first use case we're working on is community contribution system. So in this case, card space and card flow work together in conjunction. So a card space would be, I'm creating a new document, my awesome idea. Uh, and then when I submit it, I created card flow, which is a new type of kind of ephemeral space that's created. Again, another container that allows this card to exist. I send a message, please review. The other person get invited and they say, oh, I'm a reviewer, I approved it. And now this card get merged into an official site. Uh, and this get published. Now, the user doesn't see all the things that's going on, you know, whether it's the Git stuff, the revision control, the indexing, the publishing. All they see is I have a card, I submitted it to someone, they accepted it, and it shows up somewhere. And that's the illusion that we want to be able to give people. And what this first version of it is actually done entirely using Git. Um, so we have a Git-based workflow so that all the changes and all the new content are actually uh, uh, done in the content addressable way. And then we create this commit, which is your new changes. We submit it and we merge it uh, uh, using GitHub as the first uh, service provider. Uh, as, uh, uh, and so you're actually making an open source contribution when, you're, uh, when you bring it that way. So this is an example of what this looks like. This is actually live code that I pull uh, from our servers uh, right now, which is a complete rendering and query pipeline where the cards are uh, brought together to create a website. It has 27 different mini apps or cards that's being built here. So you can browse all the data, create new cards, uh, generate the pull request, which is submitting revisions. Uh, we have, you know, we, we have this data model, which defines different content type. And then we give you a, basically a standard editing interface uh, for it. We inspect your model and give you a field summary, in this case, editing the title. Uh, and then this idea of add-ons that in the future, if you have a very, very advanced properties type, you should be able to come here and add that into this particular experience. And this is something that is totally running. Uh, we'll give some public demo very soon so you can uh, see how you can actually construct an entire uh, uh, community site, um, uh, not just, you know, controlled by one or two parties, but anybody can essentially contribute. Now, obviously, editorial rules apply, but the basic mechanism of the construction of this catalog of content and data and settings is curated through this Git-based workflow. 
And this is a little sneak preview of uh, an upgrade on the way this looks. So we have uh, been working on a design system called a Four Edges Design System, uh, which brings the capability of all these administrative tools and all these helpful tools, configuration, sharing, uh, searching your library, switching, getting notified, and seeing cards in its different form. All those things card developers don't have to do. And as long as they, they co construct their card in a template, we give you all these powerful tools. The same way, once you created a, a screenshot, you know, Instagram give you all the filters for free. You don't have to do much. And this idea of four edges is that, you know, each of the edge provide different capability, but they're all shared across all card-based applications so that once you learn how to use the properties panel, for example, for, for one type of card, it's the same whether you're configuring a piece of content, a data source, or, you know, configuring your wallet, something like that. It's using the same capability. And you know, one of the biggest idea of the uh, four edges system is that as you interact with different card based system, you're collecting this library that, that of all the things you've seen, almost like your download directory in your computer, your document directory. And anytime in the future when you want to like, oh, I have, you know, I already did some, you know, I have a user profile, or I want to, I already done KYC, can I reuse this information, this card in this particular workflow? You can bring that from your library and apply it or drag it or pick it from, from this collection. This idea is pretty radical that, that your card Cards because they're so mobile and modular, so tangible, allows you to collect uh, things that may come from different network, interact with different people, both at rest and in the workflow, and you just accumulate these uh, uh, assets uh, that, that you can reuse in the future, and it's all yours. Now, obviously, you can use the library to search within the particular site as well, and that's really uh, the type of duality that we support. So. You know, when we talk about you know, use cases concern, we're not just trying to create a content system, right? So another system that is actually really similar with this card space and card flow, card at rest, card in motion idea is to build a media registry. So a blockchain media registry just means that I want to create like a official registry of all the ownership information about every piece of recorded music in the world. And you know, we've been working on this project for about two years now um, as a way to drive the use case of what the platform would be, but also get the use case of this blockchain music registry to drive our understanding of what are the real like application and enterprise workflow that people want to be. Company want to synchronize the data between, oh, I, I own some song, you own some songs. Let's figure out who actually is correct. So you submit what you have and you amend and, and, and kind of approach the truth. And that is a very good uh, ap approach uh, for using not only blockchain as a way to synchronize all the amendments and all the edits, but using Git as a way to uh, track the changes so that this is not just me, I say something, you said something, but our truth actually converge and merge into the real truth. And if you look at this, a little bit, it's actually very similar to the community contribution system, right? You've got the you know the label and publisher creating and like forking and editing something, want to add a name, and then you submit that addition. Someone say, hey, okay, approved, that's okay, and then that end up updating the song dashboard with that new name on that new writer. If you look at that first use case we talked about about the community contribution system you're we working on, it's extremely similar. Uh, it's it's just the same uh, document and message and approval and this container of the public space that this stuff ends up. So the song dashboard, what's really amazing about this is that uh, it can actually uh, be hosted by anybody who is subscribing to this blockchain. So this would be uh, if you're running your own server and you're within your own network, you just look at the blockchain from the blockchain, get all of the information out using Git. You know, the blockchain tells you where to get the Git and then the Git construct and you have this new object. And this will be a song dashboard. But if another person wants to build a different type of registry or use it for their own kind of analysis, they can use this and build a very different type of card, very different type of dashboard using the same underlying data that exists in the shared repository. Um, so that's the idea uh, of the project. Um, for us, the the key is that all of these use cases that we talked about share uh, a unified layer of the stacks. So we're building up the stacks layer by layer. So on the hub layer, um, 
This is something we've talked a lot about. We have these core technology about this runtime that runs everywhere. No, when on the server, on the desktop, JavaScript is the key. Uh, Git, which is how we compose this data so that it can move up and down over time and be able to not only fork, which is something we're good at at blockchain, but also merge. And that's one of the power that you can get better. You know, content and data and, 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 and understanding the world can become better if you can merge this together and Git provides that. Uh, obviously, Ethereum Postgres uh, is something that we have done during our TGE, which is taking information on chain and making it much more query indexable. We've completed that work right now. So we have this really powerful indexing system that anything that the hub brings in allows you to do that. We also integrate GitHub so that so the community co uh, contribution system is actually going to GitHub. So if you're contributing to our community catalog of you know either cost that content or you know we're creating a catalog for Web3 ideas and concepts and projects and techniques and concepts, you can contribute using the same UI, but that becomes a contribution to GitHub as a way to build up this catalog of uh, things. So as we move on to uh, uh, kind of with this basic core set of features that's shared across all uh, Cossack application, then we can start building uh, adapters and arrangements uh, to other dApps, like lower level integration, like whether it's on EVM or in EOS, that just becomes another data feed into the hub. And the edges provides standard features like allowing you to configure a card, look at what fields in, and providing very quick ways of editing it. You don't have to make the forms. Once you make the template, what the card looks like, we already know what fields you have in there. We can give you a standard editor. Allows you to search library and find things you have looked at before. Deal with notification. Oh, someone submitted something. Please look at it. That queue features is universal, whether you're dealing with music or, or, or editorial or wallets or trades, whatever it might be, same queuing system that we provide uh, for free. In an environment dealing with visibility, sharing, looking at what's official and public and what's being in draft and with a team working together, that's all standard features provided outside the card, outside the edges of the card. But within the card itself, we want to be able to build uh, a lot of different types of uh, uh, card uh, bundles, these decks, things that deal with data. We've de dealt with that uh, in the uh, TGE. So you can see uh, balances, you can see uh, on-chain status, um, as well as you know bridging into GitHub stars and stuff like that. All that stuff is sucked into the hub and present as data cards. Obviously, we saw a lot of content stuff as well as uh, things for messaging and things for actions. And our goal is to move the asset cards. The cards that actually reflect the asset that you, you have traded uh, and you've bought an insurance contract. These are all just cards exposing its state and that state can come from anywhere uh, that is connected through the hub. Spaces itself, the type of space that you can bring this card together could look like a website, it could be a catalog like the registry, it could be a dashboard for you or for your team, it could be a portal for your customer to interact with you, or it could be a true market where people are coming to this space, putting their things in, taking things out and with different type of products. And then finally, uh, with Flow, the, the, there are a lot of similar processes with submissions, uh, decision-making, approve, deny, and obviously when you deal with more uh, processes, you want to have automation. And the great thing about having Flow being, a card flow being a separate kind of data model is that you can analyze and you can look at all the approvals and all the messages going in and do some automation where it could be very simple rules like IFTTT or Zapier. If this getting, uh, thing comes in from this person, auto-approve, or it could be smart in the future where you use rules and maybe even machine learning and AI to automatically approve or, or, certain type, or deny certain type of transaction. And the great thing about that type of thing is that it really is uh, compositional. You can build up on this data model that Costec provide. Everything has an API, and then you can build smart and smart thing. And finally, with organizations, uh, we want people to be able to use Costec to almost like when you create a Slack organization, everybody shares in different channels, uh, but the, you know each Slack group is different. Each Costec org is also different. It could be for a team, so it's just between four or five people sharing cards and constructing some new narrative, or it could be for an organization that's an enterprise that's within them, their, their boundaries, backed by maybe a blockchain, maybe not. Maybe it's just using Costec as a way to expose uh, uh, certain enterprise system and kind of arrive at some uh, shared truth and conclusion. 
But what excites me the most is this idea of using a consortium where you know, at the boundary of organization, using a blockchain to synchronize data across multiple organizations, similar to the dot blockchain use case, but also if there's a syndication mechanism where different catalogs of content and data become synchronized through a blockchain, then you can build this a larger entity, a union, a digital union beyond one organization. I think that's what it really comes down to. Uh, as the promise of blockchain is that that actually becomes the reason you would do all this stuff underneath, not only within the Costack universe, but also all the blockchain thinking that's behind Ethereum, EVM, and EOS, and all these kind of use cases. So uh, we have been working really hard uh, towards this roadmap, and this is really you know where we are, right? So we have this idea of a development frontier, which is that every single time we move to the left, we also move up. Right, we want to go build up the stack and get more features into the stack. In Q2, at the conclusion of a TGE, we had an Ethereum plugin. It's configurable and has data that represent what you go on with the whole process um, and login and KYCs and that type of thing. That's all built on the cost stack hub and, 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 and the capability. We've added the ability to deal with indexing and the Git workflow so that you can create content uh, oriented system. And we're working on that now. And our goal is to, by the end of Q4, uh, to do some of the more blockchain-y thing with Sawtooth around uh, synchronizing this distributed uh, content management system using Git. Um, and once we get to that point, we feel like we've got most of the idea of card space and card flow in the code. Uh, now, obviously, every single time we move up and down, we also have to kind of, kind of focus on the underlying capability uh, and solidify the underlying code base. Uh, by doing it that way, that means that you know, anything anytime we add new features, we're solidifying the underlying foundations so that when we build more, things get faster. And looking to 2019, uh, we will do more workflow features around submissions and the type of action interactions. Uh, we have some you know, really good work around what the user model is and how cards can be embedded in and out of a lifted from a space, put into a flow, do something and edit and negotiate and go back into space and being official either on chain or in your own possession. Um, and then you know, going beyond that, really thinking about what the kind of enterprise adoption story for people using Costack as a way to build these kind of experiences uh, that are about bringing your user base and your, and your team together, uh, and, and then beyond that, uh, thinking about consortium as a unification between traditional public blockchain and the enterprise blockchain. I think there's convergence there, and Costack is very well positioned as the uh, uh, stack to, to kind of make that all happen. So um, what you can do uh, to stay up to date is to uh, um, kind of look at the GitHub repository and that's what we've been using now. Uh, but now that we have kind of built the edges in the deck, we will start doing regular demos um, periodically uh, so that you can see as we implement new design, like the ones you've seen, it will show up and then we will you know, share with you what we're working on, on rendering pipeline, on the deeper low, lower levels structure and invite the team to kind of share those ideas with you. Uh, our goal is for community members to be able to play with this um, uh, within three months, right? So a uh, kitchen sink, which is a lot of card type we've created that you can go and make something of your own. Uh, and that will be uh, something that, you know, give you a visceral feeling that, oh, this card based universe feel different than just a WordPress site or posting something on Facebook. Uh, and then our goal and obviously the ecosystem goal is to allow people to operate their node, their hub of their own uh, on their own cloud, on their own desktop. Uh, very peer-to-peer -peer is great, uh, but it would be even better if that was something that can be delegated so that it runs continuously. But more importantly, it's your hub, it's your data, or you control it, and it's something that flow in and out of your space through the workflow that you orchestrate with the people you trust. So there are some questions from the community around how Cardstack compares to other kind of like projects. And, and I thought a little bit about it and say, you know, what we are tr really trying to do is to figure out what is the uh, uh, trade off between uh, feature rich, where you can get like an app that does a lot, versus integration and flexibility. I wanted to theme it, I wanted to integrate with my data sources. And 
if you think about package applications or like SaaS services, they're very rich, but you can't really extend them. But there are, you know, if you custom code everything, then you, it's everything you want, but it takes a long time to get to all the features that an off the shelf SaaS product or software product can give you. There are some platform called local platform that allows you to build a kind of like drag and drop and create fields and databases. Uh, we have more than that. We really allow you to start with something like that, but really extend and build your own logic, own template, and no mini apps. So we see ourselves as a programmable application framework. And so we are starting here. So Castec will start more like a, uh, a, a, a custom coding library with a set of framework for developer. Uh, but our goal is to move here, is to really, uh, you know, find a way to show people that you know, all these modules that's being created, this card type, these decks can become a, 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 a true source of features that if you're building a new card space, uh, you have a catalog of everything, including multi-step forms and insurance application and complaints and, and, and stuff like that. These are all built by, hopefully by the community, and that becomes a catalog that you can start from. Uh, we've seen that uh, in places like uh, in the enterprise like salesforce.com, where you know you can go to an app exchange and download new real estate you know forms and sets if you're in the real estate industry and WordPress in the content field. Oh, I need something to give me a map and it's plugins and themes that does that. Uh, but that's really powerful, right? There's a catalog of things that exist out there that you can bring together. Now, obviously, WordPress and Salesforce are. Uh, are, are not doing crypto and not doing blockchain and not doing this kind of deep integration, but it's a good model for us to say, hey, there's good precedent of successful open source and kind of more proprietary stuff uh, uh, that's there. But the question then is, you know, what about the other quadrant? What are the other things that's in there? So, you know, there are a lot of tools uh, in the kind of a web space where people can construct new uh, quick, uh, quick base is an example of a product where you can, or Airtable where you can create a mini app. It's quite restricted what you can do, pretty powerful if you're trying to make a spreadsheet type of database application. And for more workflow stuff, uh, you know, Zapier, IFTTT allows you to connect different systems together. Uh, these are uh, very off the shell, but you can't make IFTTT into your daily workflow. It's just automation. You still need those UI. Castec is the UI that you interact, and then we can add the automation capability. So it's quite a bit different than that. And then in, in the in the crypto space, uh, there are a lot of really interesting products. My crypto is a good example of something that's off the shelf, not really customizable, not a dev platform, certainly open source, but it's mostly for end user to use it. A lot of features allow you to interact and they're an emerging one for other blockchain. And then in the private uh, permission ledger, uh, there's something called Hyperledger Composer, more of a toolkit to get, get a blockchain up and running. Those are pretty interesting because it takes the development things and make it more of a, a low code experience to bring that out there. So the question then becomes, you know, what are dApps today doing, right? Uh, dApps are really just right now custom application exposed the capability of, of the underlying smart contract and blockchain. Very narrow, very focused, uh, integrate with its own thing, not particularly feature rich, and certainly not in, intended to integrate any other dApp. Adapt for governance, that governance, and nothing else. Adapt for asset management, that's asset management, nothing else. And if you look at the DAP development platform, a lot of them follow this kind of app store model, right? Which is build an app for this thing and we'll distribute it and here's common tools to use them. Uh, but we really believe that that's actually quite limiting as a vision, which is that in a decentralized world, why would you want an app to only do one thing? Don't you want a experience that allows you to tick together different, you know, decentralized Web3 in all four dimensions of Web3 and bring it all together. And that requires us to get outside of this kind of one feature per dApp system. And, you know, I'm going to eliminate all the tools that is not doing blockchain. I don't see WordPress and Salesforce.com getting a blockchain. And this, and this is the landscape, right? Like we're going to start out very similar to other development tools, even though I think by providing the edges and this queue and flow system, you start out with more than just a bunch of API to do storage and identity and stuff like that. Uh, and, 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 and we have a lot more pre-built template that you can start from instead of saying, hey, here's a blank page, start from scratch. So I think uh, developer adopting Costack uh, will have a leg up because there's just so much that comes out of the box. But our goal and the ecosystem goal here is to really uh, allow users, even before any developer comes in and build great things from the tools that exist, our card space and card flow to uh, uh, experience what Web 3.0 
and then learn how to do it and then do not only within one network, but take those tools and bring it to all different networks they're doing. Like, oh, I've been using this thing in the music industry or uh, the film industry really good. Let me go and gather a small team of people and using cost like the same idea to like, let's say track or, or a film project. I don't know what they're gonna do, but if those tools allow them to, instead of using email and PDFs, to use cards and workflow as a way to construct the workflow, how great would that be? And use a learning tool and being creative how they use it. For developers, you know, this is the real challenge, right? You know, developers really only get, 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 get done their work when they deliver the usage, the usefulness. So developer can reuse what's there, the cards that's open source, the decks that exist before, and build what's unique to them. So if you're building a film system, maybe it's something around film that's unique with, with it, but there's nothing about the message and approval, that's all the same. Why don't you, you, you reuse the existing stuff in the deck that we have? And that helps you drive more usage quicker and faster. And I think another aspect of it is that developer and end users are, are great, but developers don't really want to you know, service end users, they usually have idea of like, oh, you know, I built this website for you, you go host it there or, or something like that, or SaaS product where it, there's a built-in service providing model that will answer the phone or answer the email. And we really believe that this idea of decentralization doesn't mean that you're totally on your own. Someone still need to support you. And, and there's really a lot of opportunity to, to, you know, provide value and provide value means make money and, and earn revenue. And so we want people to support the stack, compete on service quality and earn loyalty. And this is the important thing. Long term, software is extremely sticky, right? When you use a piece of software, you learn it, whether it's SaaS on your, on your phone or what it might be. If it's good, you're going to keep using it. And you're going to keep, you know, with the provider that's giving you good service. It's not about, oh, we're just going to like, it's all fungible. It doesn't matter who it's going to be. There's going to be a relationship. Our idea of an application contract is that the same open source code are supported by people who made a deck, have a space, you're using it. Uh, they may share in the infrastructure, maybe even sharing the hosting infrastructure, but you have someone to pick up the phone and call. And that's extremely important. Uh, and, and I believe that there's a lot of simple values in that. So the role here is that to allow the end users and developer and service provider to do this, we have to provide the foundation layer. So this is the Castec, quote unquote, foundation, which is you know, building a strong stack, building the ability to, to have a solid way to build uh, catalog of pre-built cards and the use case templates to actually make it all happen. Because once we have that, developer and end users can, then, can in different way pull this existing resource and say, we got it, let's take it from there. And then between the end user developer, you know, happily uh, build this ecosystem with this idea of, uh, 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 you know, new stuff driving new usage pattern, driving new use case, and then new service revenue, which is the foundation of the ecosystem. So we have worked, uh, talked a lot about the overall framework of it. Costec is really two projects kind of interleaved together. One is the application framework to build this future Web3 experience. The other one is to solve the problem is like, how do you pay for and how do you fund the continual work uh, in this ecosystem? Everything is not free uh, and, and whether you're buying tokens to, to fund it or pay, paying fiat subscription revenue, uh, we want to make it much easier. So our idea has been for the Costec token mechanism, and this is something that we are uh, going to be releasing a paper on this soon, which is allowing you to use the Costec token uh, to compensate anybody's providing service, whether they're running smart contract on chain and charging your fee uh, on their token or running a cloud service, helping you host your site or your catalog. So these are all things that are pretty sophisticated as a way to distribute the value in a fair way. And obviously some things are delay settlement, some things are immediate settlement. So we're working uh, on our team on, on a paper and, and a design, a very specific design to, to upgrade our smart contract so we can add more and more of this feature so we can be much more inclusive of all the things that's going on. So, and this uh, particular update obviously hopefully give you some idea of uh, everything working on. I do think that there will be a, an, opportunity for us to talk more specifically about the uh, four edges design system which we work very hard on we double the size of our team add a lot of people that can help us understand how to you know solve some detail level problem around the design um, and so 
we in the for just design model talking about interfaces, design guideline, and future directions will be something that we'll do soon. And then obviously uh, we also talk about uh, I think a, a lot of interest around this idea of card being a universal fuel um, around the fiat on RAM, the clutch t uh, compliance mechanism, and more importantly how to participate in a whole of relayer so that you can help people whether that's uh, through your connections and your, your your understanding of other protocols if you want to bring people let's say to the EO system or you have another ecosystem you want to bring people to people come to Castag experience web3 and then use uh, your host or your relayer to tap into other services so they don't have to go to and buy their own token which may be too difficult to do so um, there's a couple of questions that the community has asked uh, beyond this point. Uh, one of which is, you know, you've spent some time, uh, I've spent some time in Asia uh, uh, in the summer, uh, really talking to a lot of projects, especially the technical uh, founders of the projects that, that's doing blockchains or smart contract and say, you know, if we're building this experience layer, what can we uh, be useful to your ecosystem? And I've, a lot of those learnings about what the challenges are uh, that they're facing in uh, getting real world utility and getting more people to ecosystem is that it's very hard to go and bootstrap an entire UX community from scratch. So we provide them the ability to say, hey, here's a bunch of cards, let's connect it to this ecosystem and suddenly all the things are already up and running from day one, just building that one hub plugins. So we're gonna continue this discussion and presenting essentially like a small uh, uh, deck of like basic crypto blockchain project cards that we expose to capability uh, and, and those partnerships are ongoing and hopefully will release not only for the Ethereum ecosystem, but other blockchain project ecosystem and we be serviced on those community so that they can hit the ground running with all the cards and all the workflow that's already there. Um, and the other one is that, you know, you know, our project, you know, when we finished the TGE, uh, we divested uh, out of our ETH holding, only about 15% left now into fiat and Bitcoin. So we're a healthy project. We can execute this vision as planned. And it's exciting to be able to see uh, the, 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 the progress that our team has been able to make, uh, as well as seeing the, the, the applicability of our technology to a lot of problems as people move beyond speculation to utility and looking at user experience, not only as a differentiator, but a necessary step for us to get to that type of uh, 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 um, promise of what the decentralized world can be. So I want people to understand that Kasek at the uh, end of the day is about unlocking the value and the promise that we see by allowing people to experience it. So uh, we want to put the tools in the hands of end users, and that's our our, our deep go. We want developer to learn from our developers who are learning from our own core team to figure out how to find the right boundaries so that these mini apps can be built really simply uh, with skills that does not require you to be a blockchain engineer, just a web developer. If you know web dev 3.0 JavaScript and API, you will be able to build what it looks like the experience layer of these new apps. And that's how we're gonna get developer adoption because we're reaching out not to the same pool of people who know how to do blockchain, but broadly to people who say, hey, were you doing you know, JavaScript and before, why didn't you try uh, building these new type of workflow? By the way, I just turned your workflow into a Git transaction that used the blockchain. You're a blockchain engineer now. And that type of excitement is really the type uh, that will really bring new entrants, not only on the Castag project, but also to the underlying product that we integrate with. So thank you very much for your time today. And uh, um, we have a new slogan apparently. Uh, so it's Castag, um, experience Web 3.0. So thank you very much. And I hope to talk to you soon.